Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy Dre back with another episode of Talking to Myself. Now, uh, last podcast, we saw the first big domino to fall uh, with the Cassie and Diddy lawsuit that uh, is pretty much stemming from the deadline that's happening uh, with the Adult Survivors Act. And that is actually coming to an end actually today. Okay. As a well, it's probably over now as I'm recording this because it's about like nine something uh, Eastern Standard Time. So the legal deadline has prompted a rush of sexual assault lawsuits against high pro- high profile figures, including Axel Rose, Sean Diddy Combs. He got like three lawsuits pending and even the New York City mayor, Eric Adams, which a lot of people are not really too fond of anyway. So the list of names has grown this week with some of them being accused of abuse that allegedly took place decades ago. So that's in that's in part because of the New York law. The Adult Survivors Act is due to expire on Friday, which was today. So what is the Adult Survivors Act? You may ask the law is uh, well, the law, which was signed by New York Governor Kathy uh, is it Hockle? Hockle? Probably Hockle. Last year, temporarily lifted the statute of limitations for people filing a sexual assault complaint. So it was enacted in November of 2022 for, uh, for a one year period. So the act gives people a quote unquote look, look back window on sexual assault that took place before the 20 year legal statute of limitations. This uh, this means civil lawsuits on historic sex crimes can be filed for a limited time. It specifically applies to people who were victims of an assault when they were a, an adult over the age of 18. The act is modeled after a similar one for children, which is called the Children's Victims Act, uh, which was passed in 2019 in New York. So why was it passed? Uh, the act was passed to acknowledge the impact of trauma on sexual assault uh, survivors and how it may delay people from being, from coming forward uh, to the legal system at the time of the incident. So that's why, you know, it was pretty much uh, enacted. Well, it was, it came up, they came up with the act and then, you know, it was uh, brought into uh, legality so people can actually still try to get some justice I don't know if you could still, you know, pretty much uh, do criminal charges, but, you know, you can at least do like, you know, civil and try to get like monetary, uh, monetary damages and stuff like that. So there was a lot of celebrities that were pretty much named in uh, some lawsuits and uh, pretty much Jamie Foxx, Bill Cosby, uh, gynecologist Robert Haddon. Um, it was like Diddy, Aaron Hall, uh, like I said, uh, the New York mayor, um, you know, pretty much like he is uh, named in some of these lawsuits as well. So, uh, yeah, it, it's it's, uh, it's going down. And I look like Cassie was her lawsuit was the first big domino to fall. And then, you know, the, all the other lawsuits are coming uh, since you know, the act was about to expire today. Um, actually like Donald Trump was in there, uh, named in there as well. Uh, who else? I'm just looking through the, through the list. Um, Harv Pierre who worked for bad boy, uh, was named, uh, renowned photographer, Terry Richardson, um, claim, uh, claiming no. Okay. So model, um, Minerva, but uh, is it Patillo? Probably Patillo because it's like a Spanish last name. And two L's, I know, make a Y sound in Spanish. Uh, <laughs> I know a little bit. <laughs> but uh, she claimed that he forced her to give him oral sex during a 2004 shoot and later published the pictures in an art, in an art exhibition in, uh, in a 2006 book without her consent. Yo, so he was pretty much a slime ball, dog. So I'm all for this. You know what I'm saying? So like if this shit actually, you know, if these lawsuits are legit, um, 
you know, if they can go after criminal charges, then yeah, I would have them go after criminal charges too. But I just want to see, you know, uh, these victims get their come up in, in some some form or fashion. You know, whether it be you know lock some dudes up. Oh, who, who else? That's say Jamie Foxx was named in a lawsuit too. Um, yeah, because uh, I know like Diddy, he was named in like two more. I believe one was when he was in college. Uh, he allegedly drugged and raped a, uh, a woman. And then uh, the, the other third lawsuit was him and Aaron Hall. And it was a lady saying that those two took turns uh, sexually assaulting and raping um, the lady and her friend. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, like, oh, Russell Brand, uh, Marilyn Manson were also named in uh, lawsuits as well. So yeah. Um, I mean, earlier this year, E. Carol, uh, e. Jean Carroll, uh, she won a $5 million judgment uh, against, uh, you know, Donald Trump when he, uh, she filed her suit under the ASA Act. And um, pretty much like it's, he won't stop shutting the fuck up about her. So she might win some more money <laughs> if you don't shut the fuck up. Um, oh, yeah. Harvey Weinstein was named in there, too. Um, I think by Julia Armand. I'm like, yo, my man's been locked the fuck up. But hey, if you got to come up off that money, come up off that money, too. You already locked up for some other shit. But if they can add some more years to that motherfucker, make sure he ain't never getting the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Like he was another one that was running wild in the industry unchecked for years uh, before, you know, we all saw his public downfall. I feel like we in a we in the beginning stages of the public downfall of Diddy as well. Because like I said, my other the previous uh, episode to this podcast, but to this episode that, you know, pretty much like he's been running rampant for decades, being unchecked. And now people are starting to, you know, women are starting to step, uh, come forward and talk about it. So, you know, like I said, like, I, I don't feel sorry for none of these people. Uh, I haven't seen anybody come forward with a lawsuit against, um, what's his name? Um, seeing his face, seeing his face, Russell Simmons, because uh, I know like he has some allegations before, but I haven't seen any allegations come from, um, you know, the SAS Act. So pretty much uh, uh, see what happens with that. Um, but pretty much, yeah, like shit is getting real out here. And people are like, oh man, like it's another lawsuit, another lawsuit. It's just money grab. Like, nah, I believe these people. I believe these people until like it's proven that they're not trustworthy. Like pretty much like I believe someone until it's proven that they're not. Then I'm like, all right, cool. Now we can't trust you. You know what I'm saying? But pretty much, uh, yeah. But I'm, in my opinions, it's like, you know, you can always one, See a woman's body body language, see if she's into you. And if she's not, then pretty much like just leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? Like keep your hands off people, whether it be a man or a woman. Keep your hands off people if they don't want any sexual advances or you're not gonna be able to like no is a complete sentence. So don't try to uh, you know, guilt them or try to persuade them or you know what I'm saying, try to get them to do what they don't want to do. If you gotta sit up there and try to convince them and sway them, yo, that's pretty much like that's that's a form of sexual assault. You know what I'm saying? It's a form of like co coerced rape. So I don't I don't respect none of that shit. And I like to see, you know, perpetrators get their comeuppance, whether it be you know after they did the act or maybe whatever, 20 years down the, down the line, 30 years, whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? get these motherfuckers off the street or just make them pay because no means no but i'm just surprised that some of these people they're like serial assaulters like yo if it was if it was me or you know what i'm saying someone in my family nah you wouldn't be walking around to this day dog you'd be six feet underground somewhere or swimming or uh you know in the ocean somewhere getting eaten by fucking sharks and other fish <laughs> you know what i'm saying fuck that i don't play but i don't play with that shit dog but um yeah so i just wanted to talk on this and 
and see uh, how these stories progress. But yeah, Diddy, he's out here wilding and he just needs to be stopped. All right, so another guy who might actually have vagina be his downfall is Josh Giddy. He plays for the Oklahoma City Thunder. So the NBA right now is investigating uh, an alleged um, relationship that he might have had with a minor. So the NBA is investigating allegations that Oklahoma City Thunder guard Josh Giddy had an inappropriate relationship with a minor. Uh, NBA spokesperson Mike Bass told Yahoo Sports uh, senior NBA reporter Vincent Goodwill. Now, the social media posts uh, feature, uh, featuring videos and photos intended to support the allegations went viral this week. Uh, the first claims first surfaced uh, Wednesday night. Uh, the 21 year old was made available to reporters uh, at Oklahoma City uh, there at their practice on Friday bought today <laughs> and uh he was a you know a, a full participant in practice but when asked about the allegations he did not offer an explanation he said i understand the question obviously but there's no further comment right now that's how he answered so you know the thunderhead coach um mark i don't even know who the hell this dude is mark nine Dine, Dine, whatever his name is uh offered a similar response he said it's a personal matter and i have no comment on it and that'll be my comment on anything related so coach ain't even speaking about it so giddy is 15 years into his third nba season after impressing scouts his rookie year uh, with the i guess it's adelaide adelaide 36ers and the australian nbl uh the yeah because he's from he's from australia so i'm like pretty much you know if he's found to have an inappropriate relationship with a 15 year old uh because i believe the age of consent is 16 in oklahoma and i believe it's 16 in his country of australia too but i believe like this relationship was uh alleged to have happened in oklahoma city well the oklahoma so Pretty much the Thunder are currently sitting at 11 and 4, second place in the Western Conference. Uh, they actually play Philly, uh, my Sixers, who are fifth in the East on Saturday. So we'll see what happens uh, with these uh, allegations. Um, yeah, man, you got to have, uh, you got to use correct judgment, man. Like, <laughs> if your gut might be telling you, like, nah, I'm going to have to pass. No matter how good she looks, man. Like just uh just say no. So pretty much this is what's going on. Um we'll check back later and see uh how this how this progresses. Um if it goes to you know a full trial, if it was a farce or so I will just keep an eye on that and just felt like bringing it up because uh it is it, it was a uh, it's a big deal right now going on TikTok and uh, Twitter and stuff like that. I see a lot of people talking about it. So that's all we got for right now. So we'll see if anything else comes up. I literally just stumbled across this on my Twitter feed. Uh, apparently Derek Chauvin, uh, the former Minneapolis police officer convicted of Murdering George Floyd was stabbed by another inmate and seriously injured Friday at a federal prison in Arizona. A, a person familiar with the matter told the Associated Press. So the attack happened at the Federal Correctional uh, Institution in Tucson, uh, a medium security prison uh, that has been plagued by security lapses and staffing shortages. Uh, the person was not was not authorized to publicly discuss details of the attack and spoke to the a uh, spoke to the AP on a condition of anonymity. So the borough of prisons confirmed that incarcerated person uh, was assaulted at FCI Tucson uh, at around 12:30 p.m. local time Friday. Uh, in a statement, the agency res uh, said responding. Inmate, no, responding employees contained the incident 
and performed life-saving measures, in quotations, before the inmate, uh, who it did not name, was taken to the hospital for further treatment and evaluation. So, uh, no employees were injured. The FBI was notified. Uh, the Bureau of Prisons said uh, visiting visiting at the facility, uh, which has about 380 inmates, was suspended. Uh, messages seeking comment uh, were left with Chauvin's lawyers and the FBI. Uh, Chauvin's stabbing is the second high-profile attack on a, pres- uh, on a federal prisoner in the last five months in July. Disgraced sports uh, sports doctor Larry Nassar, uh, who was, you know, the one that was molesting a whole bunch of uh, gymnasts and a bunch of athletes and stuff like that over in um, at Michigan State for a long time. Uh, he was actually stabbed by a fellow inmate uh, at a federal penitentiary in Florida. Uh, this is the second major incident at the Tucson federal prison in a little over a year in november of 2022 an inmate at the facility's low security prison camp uh pulled out a gun and attempted to shoot a visitor in the head god damn how the fuck did you get a gun and i mean i know it's low security prison but shit how the fuck did you get a gun uh, the weapon in which the inmate shouldn't have had misfired and no one was hurt so chauvin who is 48 uh no 47 uh, was sent to fci tucson um, from a maximum security prison in Minnesota State uh, in August of 2022 to simultaneously serve a 21 year uh, sentence. Uh, no, hold up. Yeah, to serve. So he's serving a 21 year federal sentence for violating Floyd civil rights and a 22 and a half year sentence for second degree murder. So Chauvin's lawyer, Eric Nelson, had advocated for keeping him out of general population and away from other inmates anticipating he'd be a target in minnesota chauvin was mainly kept in solitary confinement uh, largely for his own protection uh, nelson wrote in, a, in court papers so last week uh, the u.s supreme court rejected chauvin's p- appeal for his murder conviction separately uh, chauvin is making a long shot bid to overturn his federal guilty p- uh, his federal guilty plea and claiming new evidence shows he didn't cause Floyd's death. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how new evidence would show that because your neck, I mean, your knee was on his neck like the whole fucking time that you know, for like nine and a half minutes, my guy. So I don't think you're going to win that shit. It's a very long shot and it's not going to it's not going to happen. And it was all over. He was uh, suspected of trying to pass a counterfeit twenty dollar bill. So pretty much that's how all that shit happened. And we all know the protests and everything that everything else that happened. So um, I don't feel sorry that he got stabbed. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, it might be, you know, karma coming back to you. And uh, hey, if you make it, you make it. If he dies, he dies. Fuck that nigga. That's all I got to say about Derek Chauvin. But I just wanted to share that. <laughs> And if you're a Derek Chauvin supporter, eat a dick, nigga. All right. So I just wanted to switch gears and just talk about, I guess, uh, what I wanted to, something I've been meaning to talk about. Um, and it's pretty much like mental health and like why it should be added to health insurance. So it's about eight reasons why it should be added to, you know, I I feel it should be added to health insurance. And there's probably a lot of people out there that feel that way, too. So number one is the, you know, equal treatment of physical and mental health. The mental health is an integral part of our overall well-being and treating mental health on par with physical health reflects a comprehensive approach to healthcare, acknowledging that both aspects are interconnected because they are um you know you might not be in the best of physical health because you know mentally you're not feeling well you know you might actually be stressed out which actually causes weight gain um you could be depressed you don't feel like doing anything uh you could be bipolar which is all mental health there's plenty of mental health issues that you could be going through that could actually affect your physical well-being 
actually like you know i was feeling depressed like feel help it you don't feel you feel like you don't have energy you don't want to do anything um so there's a whole bunch of stuff you know you could be stressed out dealing with a whole bunch of issues um what is it like unresolved trauma there's a whole bunch of things that you could be going through mentally that's affecting you physically uh number two is reducing the stigma uh now incorporating mental health coverage reduces what helps reduce uh, the stigma associated with mental health issues especially in the black community still like a stigma still oh i'm not going to talk to a therapist or anything like that because i don't want those people in my business and that's not what we do and all this and that like nah if you need help and you have nobody to talk to sometimes you got to talk to a therapist um so uh it sends the message that mental health is just as important as physical health and encourages individuals to seek help without fear of discrimination uh now number three is preventative uh, preventive uh, care and early intervention so mental health coverage uh, allows for preventive measures and early intervention so timely access to mental health services can prevent the ex exas exacerbation of issues uh, leading to better long-term outcomes so pretty much in, in a nutshell if you have access to you know seeing a therapist or you know seeing or going to talk to somebody about your issues it could actually prevent you from maybe being depressed or you know feeling like you're hopeless or you know what i'm saying so it could definitely help if you catch it early it's kind of like you know catching a disease or catching cancer early it betters your chances to resolve the situation now uh number four is enhancing overall health outcomes uh addressing mental health issues can contribute to better overall health uh better overall health outcomes uh, mental health conditions can can impact physical health again now i'm beating this in the head it can it can affect your, your physical health um treating them uh yeah and treating them can improve a person's quality of life and reduce the risk of other health problems mental health is very important and it's intertwined with uh with everything else that's connected to your body <laughs> your physical well-being your emotional well-being all that stuff is it, it starts starts with the mental first now productivity and economic impact uh, mental health issues can affect uh, an individual's productivity uh, at work by providing mental health coverage insurers uh, contribute to maintaining a healthy and productive workforce uh which can uh, which can have positive and uh, economic in implications so yeah but that is probably tied into um you know employees employees being like overworked as well like stressed out um there's a whole bunch of things at work that you can actually change to actually better people's mental health at work which is like you know i guess lightening the workload Stop putting so much work on people and maybe like reduce the hours because some people you know they want to cut back to like a 35 hour work week or 32 hour work week because it's proven that it can work in european countries but for whatever reason in america they don't want to do that but we all know why it's because these bosses and ceos they only care about the bottom line so uh let's see number six legal and ethical uh, considerations so many jurisdictions uh, recognize the importance of mental health uh, parity laws requiring insurance plans to cover mental health services to the uh, to the same extent as physical health services um, this reflects a legal and ethical commitment to fair and comprehensive uh, comprehensive health care uh, number seven uh, cost savings in the long run so investing in mental health coverage can lead to cost savings in the long run by addressing mental health issues early. Insurers uh, may prevent more severe and costly interventions later, such as hospitaliz hospital hospitalizations and extended medical tr uh, treatments. And then number eight will be improving public health. 
So mental health coverage is essential uh, for the overall improvement of public health. A population with access to comprehensive health care, including mental health services, is more likely to thrive and contribute positive, uh, positively to society. Incorporating mental health into insurance, uh, into health insurance aligns with the holistic understanding to health and wellness, fostering a society that values and supports uh, the mental well-being of its members. So, yeah, <laughs> that's why I think mental health should be covered in, um, in medical insurance, well, health insurance, period. Um, and also, like, vision and dental should be that it should all just be like one lump sum that you're paying because like it doesn't make sense that uh dental is actually treated differently from like your health insurance as well because like i don't understand like why teeth cost so much as well so but that's a whole another fucking subject <laughs> but yeah uh mental health is very important uh i'm a champion for that and anybody that's going through mental health issues you know i'm with you and i hope you get better and that's pretty much all i got on that subject but yeah include that shit in the health insurance it could be done these medical insurance these yeah medical insurance companies they're just greedy as fuck <laughs>